So with Spider-Man Homecoming around the corner, we don't really know how much you're going to include of classic Spider-Man stuff. Uh, you know, for all we know, Oscorp and Norman Osborn could be in the movie, and we just don't know right now. But there's been a lot of people asking me if you could give us a pitch on how would you introduce Norman Osborn and Oscorp into the MCU can you do that? And I'm going to do that in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm kind of um, just kind of doing this off the top of my head, really. I've only had like maybe a day to think about it, so I haven't really hashed it out with how it would connect with all the other franchises like I had for some other previous pitches. So if there's a few little problems here, um, you know, excuse it for that. But uh, let's get into my pitch of how I would introduce Oscorp and Norman Osborn into the MCU. So first and foremost, Oscorp would be a company that is not a direct rival to Tony Stark or anything like that. They would in fact be a good for the people company. They would develop a quote unquote cure to the inhumans and what's happening with all these uh, you know, changes with humanity. And they would develop it at a low cost, almost coming out as the bad guys. This is a corporation that we've never seen the likes of before. Even Stark after he became Iron Man, was still, you know, dealing and trying to make a profit. These guys would actually be out to look out for the consumer. And I would layer their history all the way back to even World War II and before that, saying that they were one of the companies that was involved with the early development of the Super Soldier Serum. Unfortunately, theirs had some adverse side effects and was just not living up to some of the other examples and prototypes that they were seeing. Something along the lines of where they they were seeing some adverse effects on the human mind that was making the people that were subjected to these actual experiments a little more violent than they were initially hoping that they would be. They knew that there were side effects, but they didn't expect the people to absolutely start losing their mind. Now enter the last decade or so of all these crazy revelations that have happened with aliens invading, the existence of aliens, superheroes emerging, Norman Osborn took the company that was previously more or less dead, there was nothing to it, it was just kind of sitting on the wayside, and he decided to resurrect the name. He saw that he could use his intelligence, his intellect, and develop something that could really help everybody. Now, not wanting to have the history of his family all hinge on a failed super soldier serum, he decides that he is actually going to try to reinvent that serum and try to make a modern super soldier because the forthcoming war and the wars that keep raging on and all these intergalactic threats, Earth is going to need the best that they can get. Enter the Norman Osborn Tony Stark relationship. As Norman Osborn in my universe would not be an evil person as I've stated, he's actually a person out to help the people and he asks, willingly asks for help from Peter Parker who he knows has relations to Tony Stark to set up a meeting. At this meeting, he pitches him this future, this ideal future where there could also be a cure for inhumans, for people that don't want these powers, who feel like they don't deserve them, people that feel like they just want to go back to their normal life before they were transformed into these quote-unquote hideous creatures some of them became. Tony Stark agrees to help them and the two are going to work together with the help of Bruce Banner because Bruce is still willing to actually develop a cure because he still sees the Hulk as a curse. While the three are developing a cure, we see a relationship that is starting to spawn between Norman Osborn and of course Peter Parker. But not only that, there is of course one more important friend that Peter Parker has in this. And this happens to be the same person we see him gradually become best friends with in Spider-Man Homecoming. This is of course Ned Leeds. And I think some of you are figuring out where this is going right now, but just bear with me. It turns out that Ned's dad has recently become one of the lead experts on manipulation of genetics and various things over at Oscorp, and he's actually leading the development of a bunch of these things when the heroes like Iron Man, of course, Bruce Banner, and Norman Osborn, who has to run an entire company, can't be there to get hands on. His name just so happens to be Ned Leeds Sr. Yes, I am tying this as a character who is based on the comic books 
and this character just so happens to be a previous hobgoblin. Now the reason I would do this is because it would put the same type of relationship strain that Spider-Man Peter Parker has with Norman Osborn while eliminating that while bringing in this entire other factor of someone else being a goblin. And of course I'm choosing to ignore the Green Goblin forever because we've already had two trilogies that did that. And if you do a proper Hobgoblin, you could do it from a different point of view. Now unfortunately due to an accident in the lab that is caused by Ned not really paying attention, trying to work overtime, trying to perfect this to really push it forward to the government and get his name out there as one of the top leading scientists that can hopefully get him all, you know, unlimited money and more funding. This accident that happened involves him. He ends up dropping the serum. It goes all over the place. Unfortunately, everybody dies besides him. Something was different about Ned. Turns out, on the side, he was trying to develop his own enhancements for himself. He had some bigger aspirations out there. When Tony Stark and Norman Osborn get wind of this and find this in research, he ends up getting fired. But due to the embarrassment this would cause, this kind of gets swept under the rug as sort of, listen, we're gonna let you go, but we don't need your son, who is now upcoming, who has a bright future. We don't need him getting this in the spotlight because it's just going to ruin all his chances so you just quietly leave you go and everything will be okay or so they think now of course like i said the previous derivatives of this serum would enhance anger at this point he really had no reason to experience everything now that he's been fired everything is happening his life is crumbling his son feels like his best friend is ignoring him for this rich boy you know that is just coming up here because of his father's name of course osborn he decides well i've had enough and this anger just completely takes over now as he was also working on fixing the inhumans he was also working trying to cure the hulk he was kind of making an amalgamation of this, and this is what would inevitably cause him to start transforming. Now, my hobgoblin in this at all is not going to wear any sort of crazy suit. The last thing I want to see is another Green Goblin wearing some sort of armored suit. So instead, we're going to take the Ultimates route, where he, due to the you know work he was doing with the Hulk serum and everything that was happening there, trying to actually figure that out, and of course the Captain America enhancements and everything, he becomes the Ultimates version of Hobgoblin. So now the Hobgoblin is out here and he is wrecking the city. Able to throw fireballs from his hand. He of course has a glider. And this just happens to be some Cytec that was left over in Oscorp when they were developing other technology. You know, when they were trying to be Stark 2.0 by developing their own things to rival the military applications. So they went out there and the government was obviously like, Hey, can you make us Falcon Wings so we can equip a bunch of soldiers? Norman was like, yeah, we can try. But they never really got there because he decided he didn't want to do the whole weapons thing. He wanted to help humanity. Now, of course, that the Hobgoblin is out there, he's wrecking everything, he's attacking all of these people. We have to come up with our heroes. Tony Stark cannot be involved. He's the face of this other big company. He just cannot put himself out there. Well, we know the Hulk. He's going to do a little bit more damage than we want, so we got to keep him under control. Spider-Man is, of course, going to fight him, but who else could possibly put on a suit, and become a good guy, a real beacon of hope. Due to further investigating, they figure out that this is in fact an accidental creation of Oscorp. Being told to bury this, to not put it out in public eye, Norman Osborn is going to do the exact opposite thing. He comes out on TV and gives a speech. You know, something like, listen guys, there's this creature who the Daily Bugle has named a Hobgoblin going out there. He is unfortunately a byproduct of what I've been doing. We didn't pay attention good enough. I wasn't there the entire time and this happened on my watch. But I promise you, this will be taken care of and we will work together. This is New York. This is the home of the Avengers. And we have a contingency plan. Now yes, 
people out there are going to look at me weird. They're going to, you know, look at me and just yell at me. And, you know, they're going to insult me. And they're going to say this was irresponsible. And I agree. But I was trying to just better humanity itself. And then he makes another big revelation. Because as he's given this, Hobgoblin is just like flying through, you know, Times Square. He's throwing the bombs, destroys the big TV. And this is where he, he was given the speech. He wanted to draw him out. Because this was all stage. Tony Stark told him, do this because it's going to draw him out. Spider-Man is waiting, but here's the thing. They figured, well, we're just going to let Spider-Man take him down. Norman Osborn had another contingency plan. It turns out he was a little bit more of a uh, liar than we were initially led to believe. He was working very close to Tony Stark because he had a particular idea. And as he's standing there on the podium, in comes the same setup that Tony Stark has to put on the Iron Man suit, which ends up transforming Norman Osborn into the Iron Patriot, the Oscorp model of the Iron Patriot suit. You know, the typical stuff, Tony Stark says, yo, you stole my technology, but we'll talk about this later, man. We have to take care of this right now. Enter the final fight scene. You, of course, have Norman Osborn now as the Iron Patriot, a hero of New York who is ready to defend everything, and his company looks a lot better because they came out and admitted their mistakes. He now has an Iron Man suit, Spider-Man is there, and maybe you can even toss Iron Man into the final battle, so you have two of these suits, and of course Norman's is going to have different abilities. They're going to fight the Hobgoblin, they're going to take him out, and of course victory is won. Hobgoblin is locked away in a prison, Ned and Peter's relationship starts getting a little bit more strained because obviously he knows he's Spider-Man and he had to stop his dad. Norman Osborn now officially becomes a brand new member of the Avengers, giving them this good, productive, you know, like, outlook on society, and now New York has accepted them. He's one of their own. This is the person they always wanted Tony Stark to be. He was never the merchant of death or anything like that. From the initial get-go, when he relaunched a company that was dead for decades, he set out to do good. And coming out and admitting that he wanted to do good, everything is just kind of lining up and falling into place. He's now almost going to be like a new leader. Almost like a sword to a shield. So that's honestly my quick pitch. I've only had about 48 hours to really think of a pitch right there. Um, That's how I would honestly do it. Norman Osborn, not evil, Iron Patriot suit, sell a lot more toys, bring a different type of suit back, you know, something we haven't seen before, make it more like the comic book version, and really just go out there and um, kind of defeat some expectations.